Hey everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. This is Heidi. Um, if you've been here before, welcome back. I hope you had a great holiday season. If you're new, because it's our favorite time of year, it's whip parade time, then welcome. Um, I'll do a little quick introduction here, uh, just for any new people. Uh, my name is Heidi. I go by the Potty Mouth Stitcher, mainly because I have my moments. <laughs> And, you know, I needed a name, so that's what I went with. Don't read too much into it. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I'm from Ohio originally. I moved to Virginia 25 years ago. I'm here outside of Roanoke right now. Uh, I've been a respiratory therapist for like 30 years. That's my real job. Um, that uh, gives me paychecks that allows me to buy more stitchy stuff, which is awesome. Um... I've been cross-stitching for 40 years, at least. My grandmother taught me when I was super young, 12, 13. Back in the day, she was the one that enabled all my crafty stuff. Um, so, like everybody, I did it a lot back in the 80s and the 90s a little bit. Uh, college and life kind of got in the way. I still always dabbled. And uh, the end of 2021, I decided, you know, I come home at night or end of the day, I'm just staring at my phone playing stupid games. I might as well do something productive. So I picked this back up, found Floss Tube, jumped in. The rest is history. <laughs> so uh, that's the, the quick down and dirty. Uh, it is entirely too cold here today. I think it's the 18th of January. And I woke up this morning, it was 12. I'm like, I know I'm south of the Mason-Dixon line, but I wouldn't know it by looking at the weather. Got a couple inches of snow out there, which, you know, Virginia pretty much sets, shuts it all down. Um, but, anywho. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what else? Oh, I, um, as you'll see with the whip parade today, I like BBWs. Big, beautiful whips. It'll be very apparent. I have some smalls, don't get me wrong. I like them too. But a sampler with a pretty border gets me every time. And you'll see plenty of them. So, either way, welcome back, or welcome aboard, I'm glad you, glad you found me, get your stitchy going, and uh, sit back, and I hope I can enable you with some of these projects. Um, quick life update, uh, it was just the holidays, it was hectic, I went to Tennessee to spend uh, Christmas with my sister and her family, and then we went up to Ohio, as anyone who has been with me knows I lost my mom a few weeks ago, well, about a month ago, and uh, so just dealing with, um, you know, everything that comes with that, because we lost dad about a year and a half ago, so getting the house ready to cleaned up, sold, all of that, so it was just a lot. I came home, and my sister was kind enough to share her cooties with me, so uh, if I start coughing, because that's pretty much all that's left is this pesky cough, uh, I might have to take a break or at least I'll have a drink. So bear with me. This is the best I've felt in a while. Almost snot free, but you know, like everything, it's going around pretty hard around here. So I hope you've been mostly well, if not completely dodged the bullet over the holidays. <laughs> so um, I got my notes with me. So bear with me on that. I do actually have a couple finishes. I know, surprising. I did get some good stitchy time in the past couple weeks. Um, I showed you, the first one I showed you last video uh, that I had started, I participated in the um, Evertote Roxy Floss Co. Mar Modern Folk Embroidery Holiday Countdown Stitch Along, which is the longest title ever. Um, but it was fun. <laughs> And uh, here she is. She's all finished. This was done on 40 count turtle dove. One over two. Pretty colors. It's the first time I've ever used uh, Roxy Flosco. Hello, Felix. Thanks for stopping by. Super producer Felix. Look, I grew a tail. <laughs> here he is. Had to say hello. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. I'd do it again. Uh, I'm sure you saw a lot of posts on Instagram about it as people were doing it. 
uh, every day they gave you a new floss and they gave you a new section of the chart to work on. These are all the beautiful colors. <laughs> if Felix will help me. And um, now I have 25 beautiful colors for my stash that I'm certain I'll be using. She does, um, hers are slightly different in the fact that they're eight yard skeins. So if you ever get a chance to try them, but if you haven't already, I highly recommend them. Beautiful colors. Um, so that was the first finish of 2024. And then, believe it or not, one of my smalls. I just got to zipping on it. I finished, figured I'd finish it up. This one is Let, I'm sorry, not Let Freedom Ring. I wish that one was done. Wait till you see that one. This is Freedom Rains by Silver Creek Samplers. Nice, cute little thing. I like all of her stuff. It says, the bell proclaims on Liberty Hill, freedom reigns and always will. God willing. So, there's that. That was on 32 count. I have my card somewhere. Shrekie's tan. Yeah. It was done two over two. That was a lot of fun. Again, um, for those of you who have been with me, I used to always put some stuff in cue snaps or frames of some sort, but uh, Beth, the Red Cross stitcher, kind of turned me on to in-hand stitching when I was at the Barefoot Needle Art Retreat in Myrtle Beach this fall. I picked it up, gave it a try, and I'm, that's, I'm moving right along. I love it, especially on the uh, lower count stuff. It's much easier than the higher count. Higher count is not impossible. I'm still getting the hang of it. I'm still doing it, and um, uh, it certainly makes things go a lot quicker. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me thinking that it does, but I have two finishes. Yay! <laughs> Maybe it's all crazy. I don't know. Anyways, so there's my two finishes. Uh, 2023 stats. So last year I did start actually, you know, I was inspired by all the other plus two people that wrote every little thing down. I'm like, that's kind of cool. I'm a weirdo like that. Uh, let's put my spin on it. So if you've been with me, you know how this works. If not, well, welcome aboard. <laughs> so... I did not do the book of days. I like to have a little bit more um, writing room and or stuff to put other stuff. So I just got me a little two-year cheapo thing from the Walmart. Sticker it up because I've got them. And then every day that I work on something, write down the name of the project and how many actual stitches I do. Um, if there's some, a new start or a finish, I highlight it. Put down little goals, stuff like that. Um, also write down other projects I see when I'm watching other people's whip parades and whatnot and go, oh, I definitely want to do that one. So it's kind of my brain for everything stitchy. Um, like last year, I did 23 starts and finishes in 2023. I uh, did that very easily because I was doing several of the uh, Mill Hill bead kits. You know, those are quick and easy. So, But hey, they count. Um, <laughs> so might be a little bit trickier this year because I don't know how many of those I'll be working on, but uh, I'm going to do 24 starts and finishes in 24. God bless the people out there that are uh, going for 24 starts or the ones that are like, Hey, I'm turning 50, 60, 70 this year. I'm doing 50, 60, 70 starts. And I'm like, uh, you're my hero. Honestly, that's amazing. And I can't wait to see your whip parades. <laughs> I love it. Me, I'm going to stay with the 24. I'm going to keep it reasonable. Last year I learned um, real easy that I could, <laughs> I, you know, you think you can get all this stuff done and then uh, you have to take your reality pill in the morning and things look different <laughs> after you take that. So, Needless to say, 2023 stats, going back to my original comment here before I get too off the path. Um, once I put it all together and did all the math, last year I worked on 26 whips. I've started 22. <laughs> I finished 9. Hey. 
Um, total stitches, 79,225. Mm, not bad. And day's stitch was 237. So, goals for next year is just increase that a little bit. I mean, wouldn't we all like to have nothing better to do but sit around and work on our projects? But, oh well. <laughs> that doesn't always work either. Um, so to help with that little goal this year, I, again, I'm starting WhipGo. Uh, like I alluded to previously last year, I thought, gosh, WhipGo is so easy. Why do just one WhipGo board when I could do three? <sighs> Crash and burn. That was ridiculous. I gave up on WhipGo by like April of last year, maybe. So this year I have one WhipGo board. And technically two, because then like... Several other people. I'm doing a heifer board with uh, Floss Boss and Cousins. So, same basic concept. I have 15 whips now because I just finished one. I had 16 um, currently. So, I filled in the board, the 25 blocks, with those 15, 16 whips. And then any of the extra 10 spots, 9 spots, I just put in my bigger projects so that I revisit them. Nothing major. And each one is 500 actual stitches. So, um, I already did. This is my whip go board and the numbers that were called. Already got them done. And I don't do anything fancy. Like I said, I just printed out a little grid. Throw it in there. And it was the heft board for January. Those are done too. So, um, after I do that, and I find me because clearly it's the middle of January, then what do I do? Uh, again, if you've been with me before, you know, I, again, because I'm weird. If you didn't know that, you haven't been paying attention, clearly. <laughs> but I have a little cigar box with my whip sticks in it, where every little stick just has the name of one of my projects. And then I write them in the little book and pick five or six of them put in either a thousand or 15 blocks so with these they're not actual stitches so like on your grid of 10 by 10 blocks if five little things are actual stitches in that block hey once those five stitches are done hot dog that's a hundred if it's full coverage and it's 100 colors or 100 little stitches in there well then that's 100 either way so as I go through, I make working copies of all the, all my um, patterns and sit there and color in each little one as I do it. That's my actual stitches and then cross out the whole 10 by 10 block once all the stitches in there are done. Clear as mud. There you go. That's what I do. You do your thing. I'll do mine. <laughs> it's whatever it takes to inspire us to keep it going, right? That's kind of what it is. So um, that's my weird little process. So, if you've hung with me this far, God bless you. I promise the Whip Parade's coming up next. <laughs> uh, plans, like I said, real quick. Actually, maybe fully finish something. I learned, uh, try to frame a couple things myself or finish them in some other capacity. That'd be great. Uh, branch out a little bit. Um, my Floss Tube, is it Floss Aversary? Floss Tube Aversary, is that a word? Um, is in March. So hopefully you'll see me at least two more times before then, if not three. I'm going to try to do more floss tubes and I uh, try to come up with something fun for the anniversary. And at least a giveaway, if not something else. Maybe a, maybe a stitch along. We'll see how ambitious I get. But uh, so that's basically it for plans. Just keep on plodding along and we'll see what this year brings us. So Finally, Whip Parade. I'm going to do the Whip Parade, and then I have some haul from Christmas and whatnot, and then we'll be done. If Felix doesn't disrupt the whole thing again, because he's back. Um, why don't you get up here, Bubby? All right. As is standard, I'll start with my oldest whip. Um... And I was kind of surprised as I was looking at the dates on these, exactly which ones I've been plodding along on the longest. So, um, bear with me 
Everything's still in their bags. I know everybody's been showing bags. Again. Most of my bags, Mom made. God bless Mom. Um, we just kind of, I showed her what everybody else was doing and one that I had bought, and we ran with it. <laughs> so, that's that. My oldest one is actually my Heaven and Earth design. Um, started it last March, I'm sorry, March of 22. And I'm using the 25 count grid cloth. I took everything out, I ironed it. You should be so proud. <laughs> and when I did, the iron died. It was crazy, everything I did that particular day went to hell. I got up and I was going to the dentist and they called and said, hey, your dental hygienist is sick. We need to reschedule. Okay, fine. And then I had a hair appointment. I drive over to <laughs> Roanoke and I'm like, hey, I'm here for my hair appointment. She's like, oh, well that's tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I'll go home and get some of these projects ironed up and ready for the whip parade, right? I'm on my third one and the iron dies. <laughs> it's like, Jesus is telling me something. I don't know. So when the husband called to say he was coming home, I said, baby, get a bucket of chicken because I'm scared to turn on the stove for fear that <laughs> it was going to blow it up. So anyways, we made it through. KFC hooked us up. Anyways, this is my heaven and earth design, what I've got on it. Can you tell what it is yet? Yeah. I can't either. <laughs> it is Randall Spangler's Village Bookstore. See? It's that right there. <laughs> or I would say in about a decade this will be done. Give or take. I did try doing this in hand. I wanted to see just how tiny uh, and um, how obnoxious it would be with full coverage. Can you see that one little section I did there? I only did a tenth stitch because I wanted to see what the difference was right there. Because it is, it gets kind of bunchy doing in hand. I don't know that I like it. Looks kind of messy. But then again, I wonder, you know, the six foot test. Will anyone ever know? No. They'll probably just go, dear God, why did you make something so big? And they'll, they won't look that closely. So I have a decision to make what I'm going to do the next time I pull this one out. <laughs> so we'll see. But anyways, using all the called for DMC, it's around 89 colors, I believe. And according to, I have this one on Pattern Keeper because I can't imagine doing it any other way. Um, I have 15,068 stitches done. And that is 5.27%, uh, like I said. If it's done by the time I'm 60, I will consider it a huge win. That is seven years from now. Seven and a half. So, don't hold your breath, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm not convinced it'll happen. But, it's beautiful. I love the purples. Reminds me of Mom. It's probably why I picked it out. Um, and if you look at all the pretty little, what, if you look at all the nooks and crannies of that little bookstore, I mean, Randall Spangler does all, it says so many heaven and earth designs. Um, but I love his houses, big old Victorian houses. There's kitties in every window, there's a guy looking through a telescope on the roof, I mean all kinds of cool stuff. It's a really neat design. I digress. Number two. Um, again, the, the bag. Mama. Teresa Kogut. Land that I love. Very popular design. Who doesn't love a Teresa Kogut? Actually, part of my one, two, three stitch order, one of them, because there's been more than one. Um, was the couple DMC and whatnot for Let Love Rain. I'm gonna start that this year. I've had virtually all the stuff for it for a while now, so 
it needs to get done. Let me see. She likes to mix up a little bit of all the goodies. If you've done any of hers, you know that very well. Between some of the overdyed and DMC. It's kind of a nice mix. And I started this one in May of last of 22. I'm sorry. And we are moving right along. By begging way up. <laughs> Again, this is one of those BBWs, big beautiful whips. Trying to get you a little bit of a close up. Um Again, I think I was a sucker for the border more than anything else. And, and her colors are always just stunning. You know, you look at them, you're like, how is that red, white, and blue? When you're looking at it, it just kind of looks orange. <laughs> orange and brown and whatever. And then you put it together and you're like, wow, that's gorgeous. So, Teresa. Kicking it. I would say I'm probably maybe 60% done on that one. Let me see. Where's my little card for this one? There it is. This one's done on a 32 count, 10 roof. Two over two. With all the called for goodies. And um, I saw this one like two or three times when I was at the retreat this fall. Some people doing it on like 32 count. Was this 32 or 36? It was bigger. It was even bigger than this one. I was like, wowzer. I can't wait to frame it. It's going to take up half the wall. <laughs> it's going to be totally worth it. Um, next up. Let me see. I had so many notes. I got extra pages. This one is... Country Cottage Needleworks. Oops. My bad. Where's the bag? I know. You'd have to hear the story. You'd have to go back a few videos about the bags. Again, when we were putting them together, Mom's like, you know, I, I have a bunch of old zippers from your grandma. And darned if she didn't. <laughs> this box... That, you know, back in the day, they tore the zippers and buttons off of everything after it was worn out. And um, so some of the zippers don't really match. But they match well enough. And I know they came from Grandma, so that's kind of cool. So, bear with me. But that's, that's the beauty of it, right? Um, this is, I'm trying to find, I don't have a picture of the whole big thing. It's because it's one of the... Uh, Country Cottage Needleworks, nine different patterns to make one big thing, and it's Frosty Forest. And this one is done on Dapple by Picture This Plus, 32 count, two over two. As you can see, I'm almost done! Bit of a close up. I do have all the buttons for these. There's a button that goes on every one, whether it's a cardinal or a snowman or a snowflake or something. <laughs> I'll put all those on last. I don't want to have to fight getting your thread all caught up in that. Um, using all the called for pretties, blues and greens. Sorry, that's a mess. But this one will definitely get done this year. As you can see, I don't have far to go. So, that'll be neat. I fell in love with this one. Where did I see it? I think, um... Oh, no. Craft Gallery. I was going to say. I was going to blank on the name. Craft Gallery in Finley, Ohio. And apparently that's where Teresa gets most of her things framed. Because that's where I saw uh, Let Love Rain. 
I saw her model for that when it was first framed. It was still hanging there because she hadn't picked it up yet. And I was like, oh, you just go ahead and give me that pattern. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Those colors are just, if you know what I'm talking about, if not, Google it quick. It's golds and blues and browns. It's just beautiful. She's a big girl, but it'll be worth it. She's beautiful. Next up. Started in September of 22. Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Another popular pattern. Little did I know that boy, bad boy is pretty much full coverage. Or at least every little block. It sure makes you think so. Um, there's the bag. Using all the called fours. DMC. And this is done on 36 count Legacy. I picture this plus. And I only have the middle block. I'm gonna start on one of the others. Sorry for the creases. A little bit of a close up. As you can see, very much full coverage at the bottom of this one. But really cool. I like all the Hawk Runs. I don't know how many of the others I'll do. I think I have maybe one or two of the other patterns, but it's definitely a labor of love on any of those, for sure. But, um, what's not to love, right? They're awfully pretty. Next up is one that makes me cuss. Pretty regular. I know that's not that big of a stretch, but it happens. <laughs> I love it. It's going to be gorgeous, but I just wasn't paying attention. Didn't look that closely. Didn't look at the reality of doing this pattern when I saw it. I just thought, shut up and take my money. So darn cute. Um, not cute, gorgeous, um, but dear God. <laughs> the the color changes, the backstitch. This is definitely worthy of a holy back, backstitch Batman. I mean, totally. It's inspiration by Rosewood Manor. And um, picture doesn't do it any justice. Using all the called for, I believe it's all DMC. I am stitching this on 32 count Moon Glow. I don't know who did Moon Glow. I didn't write that down. So, thank you whoever did Moon Glow, because this you can tell it looked it was kind of yellowish. Mm. So I went with this. And here's what I've got so far. Getting the close up, and uh, you get into the middle bit here. The little house and whatnot. That's one over one. So, but just, just beautiful. Love it. It's totally going to be worth it someday. I tell myself that every time I touch it. This is going to be so worth it. It's going to be so pretty. And then I have to frog something. And I'm reevaluating my life choices. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Here's my bag. Pretty polka dots. You know, try to keep it festive because try to fool myself into thinking it's an awesome, awesome project and I love it. Because I do. Just ask me. <laughs> Next up, Seasons by the Sea. This is the one that made me go, okay. It's time. I was only ever an Ada Stitcher. Didn't understand the concept of linen. It's totally foreign to me. I'm like, all right, I got to figure it out because Jeanette Douglas and all of her gorgeous stuff and all of the specialty stitches, I'm like, I need to get my poop in a group and figure out linen because I can't do this design if I don't figure out linen. So I took her little class, figured it out, got a lot of hints from a lot of people, and it has been totally worth it. 
Uh, so this is another one of those where you buy the four different patterns and it's seasons by the sea. So like winter by the sea, you can see that they're all kind of put together slightly different. And I bought all the floss packs to go with it because a lot of them are just, um, there's a lot of silk that's super variegated and whatnot. There's really no way to get the look of these without doing it. So if you're going to do this totally gorgeous pattern, just go ahead and sell the kidney, get the floss packs, and they come with all the little beads and all the little whatevers too. <clears throat> Don't tell your husband or significant other how much it all cost. <laughs> you just why why right this is done on dun, 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 36 count maritime linen I'm pretty certain that's what the called for was I'm not entirely certain without looking and I'm doing it one over two which was what was suggested I have summer done and starting on I don't know, spring maybe? Not entirely certain. There you go. But, I mean, there's no way you could do that border without buying those floss packs because that's just one continuous deal right there. And the variegation is what makes it, you know, just beautiful. Hope you can see that since I can't see you. Um... I'd like to say I'm going to get this done this year. I'd be happy if I just finished two seasons, put it that way. Um, once I get going on it, it's a lot of fun. Because uh, again, the specialty stitches, she does an amazing job with the chart um, telling you exactly how to do it. They're not, they're not hard. I've never done specialty stitches in my life other than a French knot. And trust me, sometimes that is beyond my realm. And, um, <laughs> uh, but these have been fine. I've enjoyed them. It's been a fun stitch. If anyone's interested, like I said, buy the floss packs. It'll be totally worth your time. Love it. Very pretty. All right. Next up, I got another one of these bags. Do -do -do. Is Nevermore by Tiny Modernist. Who doesn't like Edgar Allan Poe? Very cute. Let me see here. I'm using Stormy Gray by Fabric Flare, which is what was called for. I mean, it was such a specialty looking fabric, there was no way I was not going to pick it up. Um, and I'm doing 40 count. One over two using the call for DMC. It's all the three colors. But that's what I've got so far. Very cute. Not your average Halloween-y kind of um, project. I've seen a couple other people do it, but not, not a lot. Um, you know, every once in a while, you're thrilled you find something original. <laughs> Try to keep it interesting for everybody. And it's really fun stitch when, once you get going. Um, I can see and you know, I, I, I uh, admire the people that do all those beautiful projects on black fabric. Because just even that, I mean, if I don't have the good light, there is no way, no way I could do that. It gets, at least my old eyeballs, I don't know, I can't, it, it's not um, user friendly. So that's why I've never attempted to do anything on the black linen or any type of fabric just yet because, I mean, I love the patterns. I love how it makes the colors pop, but whew, I don't know if it would be worth it, you know? All right, next up, here's the bag. We're still mama's bags. I think there's a couple in here that I've actually bought. Um, I have a handful of others that I've bought from several different people, but... 
I don't think they're active whips just yet, but they might be, might be by the end of this year. Um, this is, started it in March of last year, 23. Let Freedom Ring by uh, Lila's Studio. I'm pretty certain that's how you say it. Lila's or Lila's. Um, this is the one that I am stitching on script by Fabric Flare. 40 count. Using all the call for pretty pretties. Mostly DMC, but not all. Let's see, there's quite a few colors in this one. Pardon the itch. 40 count. One over two. It's in here somewhere. There it is. I saw the um, on Instagram someone had done uh, this on the script, and I bought it, and then didn't realize, you know, that the script itself, if you can see it, the length I needed would have been better like this, but then it would have been up and down writing. So it was a learn the hard way. <laughs> so it will just kind of fit this way. And by just, I mean just. That's why I added this on because I was doing it in a Q snap to begin with. Um, and I didn't have enough to put it in the Q snap. So this is what I've got done so far. So pretty. Love the colors. Some of that print is one over one, I believe. And um, that actually went fairly quick. It was it's a it's a fun stitch, at least that top part. I might be singing a different story or a different tune here when I get down to that big giant building. <laughs> but um the rest of it isn't bad at all. And I really like the script with it. It's very very cool. And it's a fun stitch. And especially with the, I don't know if it's just the fabric flare linen that they use. When you stitch in hand with that one, it is super easy. It's kind of a stiffer fabric. Um, and the holes are very easy to see. You know, it's not like, maybe it's an even weave or something. I don't really know. I don't pretend to know a lot about the different linens. I, I see that they have different names and I'm like, I don't know what the difference is. But <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll figure it out. Sorry for my squeaky seat here. Um, bear with me on that one. It's always something, right? Either it's the zippers or people got crinkly stuff or I got a squeaky chair or the cat's back. You know, we'll see. Just never know what you're going to get today or any day here in the holler. Next up, started this one in April. Of 23. Here's the bag. By some miracle, it's the first Plum Street. I probably own 30 Plum Street patterns. I've got a couple that are whips. This one's Gathering Honey. Another fun one I found. I fell in love with it. Where did I see it? I'm gonna forget the name, up in Waynesboro, Virginia. The shop that's been there forever and it is, um, I'm blanking on the name, I'm so sorry. A uh, very nice lady that owns it and she had this there. And again, another one of those where I saw the pattern and I was completely underwhelmed. And then I saw the um, sample up on the wall and was like, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, I used the fabric flare again, the Berkshire Hive, because it has the honeycomb on it. Pretty cool, huh? And that's what I've got done. Super easy stitch. It's going very quick. It's been very fun. Even the full coverage border on the bottom hasn't been terrible. Minimal cussing. So I like that. Minimal frogging, or, you know, I just overlook it. <laughs> I'm not a perfect stitcher by any stretch. 
Uh, Lord knows you don't want to see the backs of most of these. But no one cares but me, right? Using all the call for. Beautiful Plum Street goodies. Definitely one of my favorite designers. Like so many others, you know. It's hard, hard to resist some of these. Oh my God. Pardon me with the itchy nose. All right, next up. Probably, oh yeah, we're just getting into all the favorites now. This is Seasons of the Heart. Do, do, do. I'm doing summer. This one's summer. That's what I started with. Doing it on 40 count mystery fabric. Almost looks like a vintage country mocha, but I could be totally making that up. That's all I got so far. Not too exciting. <laughs> totally should finish this one this year. And um, if not another one, I'm sure I'll start the next. Maybe it'll be a mania start. I don't really know. But I should have this one done by May. Um, using all the called for on these. As well. 80 bajillion colors for those four seasons. And probably going to do what I'd seen a lot of other people do. Um, instead of using those little tags, I will just continue the border over and uh, go from there. I might finish these. I don't think I'll do pillows again. I have pillows around here because I have those little kick sticks that I've made with catnip in them. Um, that would look suspiciously a lot like these, <laughs> and I know better. So uh, I don't really want these to be dragged around uh, and, and hidden behind the couch like Felix likes to put all of the toys because he thinks they're all his. I'd really hate to see one of my projects sitting back there. So I doubt I will ever make pillows, but I might just do a little board finish with those and uh, we'll see. Like I said, I need to start actually fully finishing some things for a change. We'll see what actually happens. Stay tuned. Need to watch more uh, finishing videos. The All the people out there that do amazing tutorials. You know who you are. We've all heard your names. Um, like, okay, so Vanna Pfeiffer for the longest time didn't realize. Maybe we're somehow related. Like, obviously not by blood. I didn't realize either a maiden name or middle name is Epperson. My last name's Epperson. So, hey, Vanna. <laughs> Are we cousins somehow? Um, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Just because it's a weird last name. Not, don't see it around here too often. Anyways, pardon me. This is uh, Mom and I were trying to use up some of this 1950s, 40s fabric I have. We did kind of like a double deal. Interesting creation. This was last spring, I believe. This one is another Plum Street. Blackberry House. I love this one. Absolutely. Just so simple, you know? Just so simple. All the called for. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find my little card that might actually tell me what kind of linen I'm using. all kinds of other stuff instead. Bear with me. Hey, there it is. I'm so sorry. Dragging it out. Keep stitching, ladies and gentlemen. Keep stitching. i figure out what I'm doing here. Okay. This is a 32 count. 
mystery fabric. And I'm doing it two over two. There we go. That's all I've got done so far. Pretty much right above the uh, urn. I opted for a middle start on this one just because of a weird piece of fabric. Sometimes measuring three inches is difficult for me. <laughs> I have all the little gizmos, eight different ways of doing it, and then it still looks dorky. So I'm like, you know what? Sometimes a middle start is called for. And that's what this one is. So this was, like I said, Blackberry House. I'd like to think I can get this one done this year. I don't know if I wrote that down or not. I may have. Let's see how ambitious I got. That's exactly what I said. Possible finish this year. What? It's, uh, I think it's one that I've put down more than once on the Whip Go board. It is kind of big, but it's not huge by any stretch. It's no land that I love or let free to bring. Um, next up is Lacey Cottage. I started this. This is another one of the mania starts I did last year. Here's the bag. This one we finally got smart and used a sticker backing. Here's another one where the picture does it absolutely zero justice. Again, I had seen the pattern, walked by it three times going, meh, and then I saw the sample hanging on the wall. And I'm like, well, I think I'll take her home. <laughs> Doing this one on uh, 36 count, Heirloom by Needle Bling. Don't have a huge start on it. But... There we go. Get an idea of the colors. A lot of greens. Be interesting to see when the other get some of the bordering around it finished. Using all the called for. Look at those beautiful purples, greens. Bordeaux kind of thing. It's actually the name of it. How did I get lucky on that one? Bordeaux. Lacey Cottage. Looks like Felix is finally settling down. This little spot. Speaking of big beautiful whips. Seen several people working on this one over the past year. I think it was um, New Hampshire Stitcher was the first one I saw it, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to take that one. I think I won. I think I won two, three stitch that one that same night. Consider the lilies. I'm sure, you've all seen her in some capacity or another. And it was the, again, I think all the little motifs really were what hooked me along with that border. Um, and this one I thought, you know, 40 count isn't bad. Why not try 46? Because why not? 46 in hand. Again, I don't know. This one might have to go back in the old Q-snap. It depends. If As long as you're not doing kind of the full coverage areas in some of these motifs, it doesn't look as, it doesn't look messy. But sometimes the, the full coverage area when you're filling in a flower or something in hand, I think sometimes it makes the stitches look even over one. So this is two over one. 
Um, this is what I've got done so far. Not much. Let's see if I can make this a little smaller. And you can see the lighting's not the best. The pretty colors on the border there. So cute. But yeah, she's a big girl. There's the whole <laughs> giant piece of fabric. Yes. So this one with the whip go and the heifer board gets at least two on each one. It might even be three just to get some extra time on it. It's, it's fun to stitch because again, all those teeny tiny motifs makes it go by pretty easily. You don't feel like you're, you know, dragging away on the same giant house or whatever. And using all the pretty called fours on this one too. Look a little, look a little raggedy. <clears throat> all right. Hey, here's a different bag. I believe this was my first uh, Gamos Treasures bag. Isn't that cute? And you'd think this would be a Christmas stitch. It's not. I might switch it up now that I have other bags emptied and put this in something else because I do. I'll show you in my haul the Christmas thing that I bought. Um, then I'll probably start here pretty soon because it's it's so pretty. And again, like all the Gamos treasure stuff, she get a little bag. I don't have it with me. It's out in my my second stitchy spot. <laughs> when I'm trying to hang out with the hubster, I sit in my other stitchy spot. Otherwise, I'm usually in here watching my floss tube and keeping up with everything. Using all the called fours. This is all DMC, and it's Memories of the Past, Hands Across the Sea. Again, another big girl, and that border just said, take me home and stitch me. So I did. <laughs> Love it. And let me see here. I have a card, I do. I'm um, doing this all in Newcastle. 40 count, Newcastle, Platinum. Do, 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 if I can find it. There we go. That's what I have so far. You wouldn't think those colors went together. But they're so pretty. Again, the purple border. I love it. A lot of fun to stitch. Highly recommend it. So many of the hands across the sea are just stunning reproductions. Really are. I don't know how these people were so talented. Some days I can barely make my bed full of laundry and these kids were putting this kind of stuff together. So that doesn't make you feel totally inadequate. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not bitter. Not at all. And last, but certainly not least, this was, uh, I bought this bag when we were at the retreat. They're beautiful colors. Nice little envelope. Done by, um, Ladies there at um, Barefoot Needle Art. Jeez. These are all the pretty called fours. Let's see if you can figure out what it is. Just by me pulling all the stuff out here one at a time. <laughs> it's another Country Cottage Needlework special. Again, I looked right at it um, when they had their open house before, the, you know, the evening before the retreat at their store. I was like, oh, that's cute. I don't really do a lot of beachy things, but I love going to the beach. Um, absolutely. I could just 
live there and sell seashells by the seashore. Um, but was like, eh. And then someone at the tree, retreat at the tree, at the retreat was stitching it. And they had the first couple done. And I was like, okay, yeah, I got to get it. So this is the Country Cottage Needleworks Beach Boardwalk series. Uh, I know there's seven of them. I think they're all out now. I just got the seventh one in my one, two, three stitch order. And they're all side by side. They're done side by side. So you can see the running border with the cute little flags. And uh, so I bought a piece of fabric there from uh, Barefoot. It is 40 count sea mist. And I started it. This was my New Year's Day start. Sorry for the crease. There you go. You see that beautiful color? So pretty. Pretty blue. Because you know when you're at the beach, it's always just the prettiest blue sky day. But there you go. Not much of a start, but it's been awful cute. And I was I thought one of them, like the blue up there, the flags there would blend in too much because it's pretty much the exact color of the fabric but I think you see it and then once it's all put together with the rest of the flags I think it'll be just fine very pretty I've enjoyed this one so far and again this just looks like candy doesn't it just beautiful colors so that's it that's all of them so far. Um, all right, so for haul, there's not a lot. So if you've made it this far, we are 57 minutes in. Y'all are doing great. <laughs> I love what you're working on. It's beautiful. You are moving right along. I can't wait to see how you finish it. Um, I have amazing friends and family, and they got the they got the hint loud and clear that 123stitch.com uh, does gift certificates. So Santa, hook me up. Um, I'll show you that real quick. Also, I did, I finally found, we were shopping right before Christmas, my sister and I, and I found the ornaments. For my ort jars. Ta da! There we go. Let me hide behind it. And then on Etsy, I just put these on here. I'll probably switch how it's hanging on there, but can you see that? There's the little year tag for it. These are actually plastic. So that's 2023's orts. Most of them. Not all of them would really fit. And this is 22s. And then, like I told you, I kind of started the fall of 21. I don't have a hanger for this one yet. Oh, go get him. He's a cute little one. I have a bunch of these. So, if I am really good, which I don't know, um, I might try to do like one or two of these big girls. And just save the orts from those specifically. And maybe do one or two that are just like, oh, this is the Memories of the Past ornament. And maybe in a year or so I can finally get a little skinny Christmas tree up in here. And you guys can see something other than just that. <laughs> maybe. Um, but I've, like I said, it was on Etsy that I found these cute little charms. And it was a lady, Loretta Mazzo, Loretta's Beads, if anybody's looking for stuff like that. Uh, she also sent me, you know, rings to actually hang them properly. And a couple extra glasses, owl, and whatever that is, a rook, some sort of chess piece. Very cute. I figure I can put those in a charm for, um, I don't know, floss or on a bag, a project bag. Um, another Etsy purchase just the other day. Uh, Sylvia Ward, I know is her name. 
she's sending me, um, I had her print something for me. It's slightly different. It's kind of like a project card. Um, I'd seen someone else mention this. Didn't write it down. So sorry about that. Just an interesting way of doing a project tracker card. So this one's 2024-25. It's a two-year tracker. But they actually went through and they would highlight every day they actually worked on that project. So these were PDFs. I got 2024-25 and 23-24. And she, uh, on her page, she said she was going to have five-year trackers here soon. And so some of you that stitch as slow as I do or do a lot of the full coverage where you know darn well it's going to take more than um, two years <laughs> to get it done. And there you go. That's what they look like. And again, you just print these out on, I use cardstock. Um, stay tuned. We'll see if I keep up with any of these. It was like $5 for the download. Certainly not the worst thing I've ever wasted my stitchy money on, right? All right. So one, two, three stitch. I had seen this one finished two or three times and every time, I mean, it's gorgeous. And I'm about to finish Frosty Forest. So I figured what the heck, I need another one in my life. Other than of course, uh, the beachfront boardwalk. But uh, this is Country Cottage Needleworks and it's their, I don't know, is this actually called one of the Santa Village ones? But it's, again, it's the border. And when you see all of these done, I think it's done in three rows of four. There are 12 of these. Beautiful little doojabbies. Houses, I guess. <laughs> um, that was Gingerbread Emporium, Hot Cocoa Cafe, Mrs. Claus Cookie Shop. I mean, you know, between the bottom border that's the ivy, or holly, I should say, and then the top that looks like a little candy cane. Yep. Just suckered me right in. So again, there's 12 of them. She's going to be a big girl. I do not have fabric for her yet. Um, there's all her beautiful colors. I mean... How can you not like that? I also bought all of the beads because there's a bead on each one, of course. Look at that cute little wreath. Reindeer. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a cookie. And a bell, a sleigh bell. So cute. Cardinals, really cute. I can't wait to start that one. We'll see if I can hold off. I will wait till I finish Frosty Forest and then I'm jumping into that one. Um, and then the one, two, three stitch order that just showed up. Oh, see, there's my last one of the boardwalk. But somehow I had missed. I went through because I wanted to do a kit parade next. Um, so stay tuned for that. Maybe in a couple weeks I'll have that done. Or kind of just, it, 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 I don't have a lot. I have maybe four or five. So it's not like it's going to be a whip parade. But I like the concept. And then if I have things kitted up and ready to go, that when certain things come up, holidays, mania, birthday, whatever, all the stuff that comes up <laughs> as we go. Any excuse to start one. You know how it is. Um, and there you go. So I just finished up buying floss for a couple, three different projects. And I'll just give you a little taste. Look at those pretty colors. Just some DMC, but I didn't have it. And why go to Joann's when you're already on one, two, three stitch? So... I believe actually those part of that's going to be let love rain 
um, Teresa Koga, the gold and blue one I was telling you about. You've seen it. And if not, you will love it. I also went ahead and invested in some just basic linen. Again, here's some 36 count platinum. Getting kind of washed out by the light. And then some winter moon. There we go, maybe. I've got a half yard of each one, so I'm sure that will. I don't know. That platinum might be good for the. Might be good for that. We'll see. We'll see what I get into. Was there anything else? I Job, I think that's everything. All right, ladies and germs, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. Um, I know I enjoyed it. It's fun to go through all your stuff and get re-inspired. You know how it is. Um, so I hope you got some good stitching done while we hung out together. I hope to see you again in a couple weeks. And um, I'll see you on Instagram. I'll post some pictures here soon of some of these that I will be working on for the rest of the month. So I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.